people. Yeah. What did Gary Marshall mean to you guys? Quite a well, mentor to everybody, ring. no? He, he, you know, he was so. Uh, he would come to me and say, "That joke isn't working for you, is it? I'll fix it." He didn't come. Another director would say, "Why can't you be funny? What's the matter with you? <laughs> be funny." But no. more than that, he also. I think the reason, like Henry, just finished directing a huge movie, and I've been directing. And you know, Ron's a major mogul, but Gary Marshall had a lot to do with um, inspiring all that. The first, yeah. he remember he sat us down. He wanted to be a, a teacher at one time in his life before entertainment, and he used Paramount Studios as a college. And he inspired all of us to learn all sides of the business. Yeah. Uh -huh. And we did. So I think I that's one a reason. Great um, a great man. Yeah. He yeah. was, uh, he was uh, even, he, he would walk in, I, I, I believe the man is a genius, he would walk in and 55 solutions would drop off the top of his head. And then you would have the problem of they were all great. Which one would you choose? Honest engine. It was just, even well, now today. look at everybody around him. You all were successful. I mean, from Tanner to, to you to, to, to uh, all of you have gone on yeah, to, uh, right. to... And of course, you all watch Brooklyn Bridge, yeah. right? Y yes, we're going to talk about Brooklyn Bridge later, too. Pardon this me, we're hogging all this. One of the best actresses in America, I was, I was totally say, on, without equal, Mary Ross. When, when on, uh, on Happy Days, G Gary would say, I'll teach you, you can get three laughs off that line. Three laughs. <laughs> now on Brooklyn Bridge, they say to me all the time, don't be funny. Don't do that. Uh -huh. Don't get a laugh there. Don't do that with your face. Don't make that little pause there. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> I said, but I was trained to do to that. To do comedy. <laughs> yes. And now you're having just, to do it straight. Yeah, because it's funny enough. Yeah. Different show. Funny yeah, enough different already. Show, different people. <clears throat> what, is, what is a silly show like Gilligan's Island that becomes a classic? What is a silly well, no, it, is, it was. A, well, I mean, we all laughed at it and loved it, and it becomes a classic sitcom. How does that change your life? What does it oh, mean God. to you to be part of that cast, Don? I think oh, it's very fun to, well, go ahead. Yeah, I, I just think it's, it's incredible because you can't go anywhere in the world without being recognized. And you don't realize what an influence that has. Is it true? Anywhere in the Anywhere. World? I once got on an airplane coming out of Disney World, boarded the airline as the entire plane broke into the song. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know the words. And I was in the Solomon Islands two years ago uh, visiting with a National Geographic photographer, five women. We were going from village to village where no women had been before by canoe. And we landed on the island of Sulafu with all these native war dances, no running water, no electricity, slept on the, on the floor in the chief's hut on mats. And as I walked into the chief's hut, the chief's wife went, I know you. She'd been to the island of Haneara in the 70s and gone to nursing school for one year and used to come home and watch Gilligan's Island. She's in an island where there's no electricity oh. or no running water. It's Mary Ann. Said, I know, it's Mary Ann. <laughs> so, I mean, wow. you, you can't get past that, you know? I mean, no matter what you try and what you do, and Bob and I have talked a lot about what it does to your career. It's a double-edged sword, of course. But when you've brought so much laughter in the heart of so many people for so long, how can you, how can you not be part, happy to be part of that, mm -hmm. I think? Exactly. Yeah. I'm glad you asked me. <laughs> <laughs> Now, you, you live where now, Bob? Out in the... I live in West Virginia, beautiful West Virginia. In the countryside. Yeah, I live up on one of the hills there. They call them, not mountains, but hills. And it's just gorgeous, and I think the retirees are going to find it pretty soon. And it's going to be just overrun with people. We but are you still Gilligan everywhere you oh, go? Oh, sure. Yeah, they kind of lose their hound dogs down there and come up and say, You seen my dogs? Um, they're out there running around that holler up there, and I ain't seen them lately, but uh, you see, would you give them a call for me? You know, I said, sure, you know, as soon as I see your dog. You know. Tell me about that fan in oh, the middle yeah. of nowhere. The fan came up, and he said, I opened the door. I'm a, I live in an end of a dirt road. I mean, I'm up in the mountains. He says, Gilligan, I drove 108 miles all the way from Kentucky just to say hello to you. And, I went, <laughs> and found him. And well, found him. I found him. <laughs> I said, I couldn't believe it, you know. He, I said, he said, I respect your privacy. And I said, what are, you, what are you doing on my front porch? And he went, oh, yeah, I said, hmm, well, I'm sorry, and he left, but you know, they, it's really, it's a sweet place to live. It's really beautiful, and it's just gorgeous, and I just love it. Oh, it's a beautiful country. Yeah. Well, how about the Je Jeffersons? How has that impacted you guys' lives? Well. Are you forever and forever? <laughs> I go, every, like they said, I go to Italy. I go, we go to Italy. We go to Hawaii. I go to other states. And uh, people recognize me all over. And they wheezy and they, you know, wheezy. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize your voice. Yeah, yeah, all right. yeah your voice is a dad giveaway, Isabel. Everybody thinks they have discovered something. You know what? You know, I'm very good with voices.
<laughs> and I recognized your voice right away. Oh, stop. You are so recognizable. <laughs> now, when you were on the Carol Burnett show, you remember when you were on the Carol Burnett show? Do I remember? <laughs> she thinks I'm senile. <laughs> <laughs> that was was that like was that like the beginning of you in LA in television? Was, was it was we... the beginning of television. Well, I mean, was that like <laughs> I I had uh, guess who's coming to dinner? The movie. Was that before you did the <laughs> that was show? before and then I was called on the Carol Burnett show after that. Yeah. They discovered what that. What was that like? Guess guess who's coming to dinner? I mean, what an, an you incredible... You don't know what guess who... Get, you, you. No, no, I'm saying what a, what a cast to work with. Spencer oh, Tracy and, yes. and Catherine Hepburn. And, and what was that? I mean, some of the greatest actors in the Well, that was breathtaking. And I was saying, I, I'm in a Hollywood. <laughs> Look at the lamps. <laughs> Makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Props. <laughs> oh, but I, I was just fascinated. And Catherine Hepburn said, there's about Spencer. I think you're marvelous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I couldn't stand it. <laughs> oh, but uh, everybody, a lot of people said, you know, I didn't know you were in Guess Who's Coming to Dinner until I saw it the second time or third time. Oh, no, because I, I remember, like, between you did But you several, don't remember me in it? Yeah, because you did several appearances on The Burnett Show, and Harvey was just appalled that you got a big major motion picture part. Damn it, Isabel's in a big movie now. Oh, he was just furious. Oh, of course, but he gets furious. I love everybody. working with Harvey. Remember, yeah. we were working with what, all those sisters. Remember the King family? Oh, it was the King family. Off of the King sisters, and, and you were uh, the only black one. Yeah. All of them were blonde. I was in yeah. that corner up uh -huh. there, and Harvey was down there. Yeah. And we were thinking, everybody says, Isabel, I heard I heard your voice. I said, it wasn't mine. We were thinking, that was Harvey's thing. <laughs> that wasn't mine. But well, I, we were both, both of you are good baritone. But I, yeah, really. And I love the part where we were playing Dagwood. And you hear, Blondie! And, and this makeshift house. And I opened the door. What you want, Dagwood? <laughs> <laughs> Because we're going to hear what excites the Fonz today, and later on we're going to find out which one of our guests shared the stage with the legendary Hepburn. And oh, we found that out, but you know what? We didn't find out about you almost dying. We have to find out about that. We'll be back in a minute.